everyone, it's Jem here. I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into this video. I really, really appreciate it and I hope that you are having yourself an awesome day. I am really, really, really excited about this video and this upcoming video series about playing guitar creatively at church. I work as a session musician, a touring musician, a music producer and all sorts of good things and I've had the privilege of playing in many different kinds of venues and different kinds of musical situations but my heart and my passion has always been playing at church. Church is the place where I found my passion and my love for music. It is where I found my passion for guitar. My mum was a worship leader and every time she would lead worship, I would always bring my toy guitar with me on stage while she was on stage. My brother's an electric guitar player. He plays for church too. And I've been blessed and fortunate enough to play and travel and play in many different kinds of church situations from big bands at stadiums to small bands from playing nothing but an acoustic guitar and a cajon or just an acoustic guitar by itself. I've played in situations with a click, I've played in situations with no click, I've played in situations where you're playing with youth bands at summer camps and with a lot of inexperienced musicians. I've played in situations with many experienced musicians in church. I've even played on albums, church albums, and done studio sessions for, for worship music. And yeah, it is, it's an absolute joy to be able to be playing guitar at church. Now, one of the things that I love and what I found over my years and experience of playing in church is that I have always found that there is a way to play music and guitar creatively in whatever musical situation you're placed in at church. Like I said, big band, small band, done it all. I've always found that there is a way to play creatively at church. Now, I don't know if anyone's ever told you about this, but there is always a way for you to serve the song and the musical situation you're in at church, and there's always a way for you to be creative in the musical situation you're in. I wanted to make this video and these upcoming sets of videos because I see so many guitarists in church these days, whether it be on gear forums, or even people I talk to, you know, people always complain, sometimes me, that, you know, oh, worship music isn't the same way it used to be before, you know, it wasn't like so many guitar parts and, you know, the guitars being so prominent in the mix nowadays is all backing tracks and, you know, synths and stuff like that. As much of a bummer as it, as it seems, especially with the way that the music is nowadays, you know, majority of it's like really slow or it's really you know, techno, synth pop, um, we have to realize that the music serves a purpose. The thing for me is that I'm totally okay with that because the music is serving a bigger picture and that means we need to take our eyes as guitar players off and put on a lens of us being musicians and learning how to play like musicians rather than playing like guitar players. Now every guitar player has a musical influence and those influences help shape how you play the guitar. Whether you're a Stevie Ray Vaughan blues playing guy, if you're an 80s guy who loves Van Halen and loves to shred and do two hand tapping, I love doing all of that. Whether you're someone who grew up in church and looked up to people like Nigel Hendroff and Stu G and Michael Guy Chislett, there is always an influence or a set of influences who have shaped the way that you play guitar. There's a sound that comes from you because of your influences and that's helped shape the way that you play guitar, but maybe you've never really found a way to bring your own voice to the guitar when you're playing at church. And what if I told you that there is a way to bring out your own creativity and your expression in church and there is a way for you to sound like you playing at church and you don't have to play 100% exactly what's on the album and there is ways for you to express the way that you play and create your own parts on the fly, you know, paint your own canvas musically while expressing your worship. That's the heart behind this video is to help you bring out your own creative expression, your own creative worship, your own voice and the way that you play guitar to the platform on a Sunday or on a Friday night, youth night or whatever musical situation you're playing in, whether you're playing electric guitar, whether you're playing acoustic, whether you're playing in a big band, a small band, whether you're playing to a backing track, no backing track, there is always a way for you to bring out your own voice and creativity on the guitar. Now, this video and these upcoming videos aren't really technique videos. These are more of me sharing my concepts that have helped me play guitar at church over the years. Now, there isn't really anything special technique-wise about playing guitar at church, worship guitar, whatever you want to call it. Really, um, we're not reinventing the wheel. Church music really is just rock and pop, and that goes the same way with guitar playing. You know, worship guitar, to be frank with you guys, is really just, you know, rock and pop 
drenched with a lot of reverb and delay. And that's that's totally fine, you know, it's it serves a purpose musically, just like how you would play, you know, blues or you'd play rock or you'd play jazz in those musical situations. You know, this is the music that is brought into the church, so we as guitarists, we've got to learn how to uh, adapt our play style to suit and serve the song. All right, now let's get to the guitar. Let's talk about the main question of this video. I'm the only guitar player and what do I play? What do I do to fill space? What do I do to play creatively? What do I do to make parts which help fill the gap between lead and rhythm guitar? So my first concept I'm going to share with you guys on what helps me when I play guitar and I'm the only one there by myself is dyads and triads. And not only just playing dyads and triads but playing them both melodically and rhythmically. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a reason why some of my favorite songs have lines like this. And they're always using triads, minor triads. It's because triads are such a great way for you to be able to play rhythm and lead stuff at the same time. You can play your melodic stuff here using your dyads and triads. And also you can strum them and make them sound like a rhythm guitar part. You know, iconic dyads include like... But they are such a great way for you to be able to play guitar creatively at church and for you to be able to suit the music that is played. Because, like I said, worship guitar is pretty much just rock and pop and a lot of rock and pop music has a lot of the, the registers, the upper registers playing in this. Now, when it comes to playing triads, the creative ways to play them is to invert the triads. You can play the triad in root form, one, three, five, or you play them in first inversion, which is three, five, one. The second inversion is five, one, three. So this first song example I'm gonna show you guys is Hillsong Young and Free's Let Go. Now it's a song which is pretty much synth and track dominated and there's not really much guitar parts going on. But I'm going to show you how I like to use dyads and triads to create parts which help fill in the space both melodically and rhythmically.
I want to share my approach before I pick up an instrument on when it comes to preparing playing for the set. Number one, it's important to know the song structure, it's important to know the parts, and it's important to know the main lines that create the identity for the song. So know the structure so that you can break the structure, pretty much. The key to playing creatively is to be able to know the parts and know the song off your head to be able to find ways to express yourself freely in those different parts of the song. So for example, if you're stuck on the bridge and you don't know how the bridge of the song goes and the worship leader calls for you to do an instrumental solo and you don't know the chord changes, you don't know how certain lead lines go, it'll be hard. So it's important to know the structure. Number two is knowing your role. Knowing when to play, knowing when not to play, knowing what sound you're bringing to the certain song and the musical situation you're in is very important. Knowing the role of what your instrument is doing with your certain worship team and the songs and the way that you guys have arranged the songs, you know, not everyone's going to sound like Hillsong, not everyone's going to sound like Bethel or Elevation or any, you know, Planet Shakers. Not every band is going to have the luxury of being able to run backing tracks or being able to, you know, have a full band. So knowing your role and what your instrument brings to the table is important for helping you play creatively and for you to be able to play your instrument at its best while serving the song and the music as best as possible. Concept number two, using open chords and a capo. Now I know what you may be thinking, the capo, oh, pff, I can play, you know, chords bar myself, but trust me, the capo is such an amazing tool to create different chord voicings and playing open chords in different keys and coming up with parts creatively. It's great to be able to play open lines like this. See how I'm creating pretty much like a rhythm and a lead part at the same time? The capo allows you to do that in so many different creative ways and it's such a great tool to have. I mean, even when you're playing acoustic guitar, open chords are super useful to have. You know, if you're playing open G chords. They're super helpful to making things sound more expressive and open rather than just normal bar chords. Concept number three, utilizing creative textures such as ambient swells, it's such a great way for you to fill sonic space. Now I know what you may be thinking, you know, if you're playing with two keys players, it's like, why should I play ambient stuff when there's keys players next to me who are taking over, you know, heavy pads and stuff? Well, it's because you can actually create creative lead lines in rhythmic parts when you have, you know, your delay and reverb trails with swells and stuff like that. For example, if I'm here, right, I can create you know, lines. It can create lines that a keyboard player usually can't. Now, one thing you gotta be watchful for is how much reverb and delay you have because you don't want it to linger too long and you don't want everything to be, you know, super drenched. So still being able to maintain clarity in your attack on your strings really helps. And my fourth concept for this video is being able to play melodic lead lines and soloing creatively in a way where you're not overplaying or underplaying. And when you play a solo, it's a way which serves a song as best as possible, meaning, you know, you don't have to go full Eddie Van Halen and shred and wail in it because that would pretty much be inappropriate for the context. I mean, it can work, and if you, if you like, it can totally work, but you gotta pick and choose in which parts of the song it can work. What I like to do when it comes to soloing when I'm the only guitar player is I like to start off by listening to the main melody of the song. For example, if we got the song Who You Say I Am by Hillsong, you have that line, which is, you know, the typical lead line, but you also have Now there's an instrumental section which has this. What I like to do is I like to expand on those things and move up the major scale. If I break that down, it's pretty much just. I'm just picking and choosing, you know, my notes off that major scale. So this next example I'm going to demonstrate is me playing Who You Say I Am as if I'm the only guitar player.
Now, I know I said that this video isn't really a technique video, but if there's any techniques that I encourage you guys to learn from this video is to learn your triads, your major, your minor triads and first and second inversion as well, your major and minor natural scales, and also your major and minor pentatonic scales. Those things are essential to helping me play creatively and I hope that it helps you play creatively too. Now I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope that you guys learnt something and I hope that this really blesses you as a guitar player in your church and I hope that this is a way for you to find out and express your creativity that God's given you on the instrument. If there's any topic that you guys want to talk about when it comes to creative playing in church, please leave a comment down below and I'd love to find out what it is that you would love help with when it comes to playing guitar at church. If you want to talk to me about music production or my Line 6 Helix presets or considering getting a one-on-one -on -one guitar lesson with me, head out to my website at www.jamalmactivatingmusic.com. I'd love to be able to connect with you. And if you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and share this with your friends and maybe people in your worship team too and other guitarists you know who may be either starting out on church or someone who is struggling to find ways to be creative playing guitar at church. So I hope you guys have an awesome day. You guys be blessed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.